Again, we go back to the Ten Commandments and understand that the first four is to the Most High. Those be the ones that we ignore. We, we ignore the first four. The last six to the fellow man. We need to implement all ten. We need to implement all ten. We stand up straight in the face of the Most High. We stand up straight in the face of the Most High. You can't be partial. You cannot be partial. Ecclesiastes 15, 19. And his eyes, and his eyes are upon them that fear him, uh -huh. and he knows every work of man. So there's nothing that can be hid from the most high. His eyes are upon them that fear him. And he knows all the works of men. What we do behind closed doors, what we do behind the tree, what we do in the valleys, in the, in the clefts of the mountains, the most high see it all. We're not escaping with anything. Nothing. So refrain from the wicked man. We know your mind. Set it up like Christ. Serve the Most High acceptable. When Christ was on the cross and his temptation came upon him, what did he say, Lord? Remove this cup from me. But not my will, Lord. Thy will. Thy will. So, yeah, we in America. Things is tight in America. The Most High will is being done in America. What are we to do? Perform acceptable faithfulness by the will of the Most High being played out right here in the midst of it. Ecclesiastes 15 and 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedness. He didn't command it. That's what it says in America. You can do what you want to live how you want to live. Read it. Neither have he given any man license to sin. That's the thing of America. America says you can do this, you can do that, you can do this. You can't nobody uh, say nothing about you. It's America. You're free to do whatever you want. America is the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, man. That's why. Nobody got to talk about anybody doing their own business. There's a scripture I want to, um, I think it's, um, Romans. It says, um, they are a law unto themselves. That's accused of, yeah, right, right, Romans, right. Romans, right. Romans, right. When they do that, break the year. Romans 2, 14. But when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. These, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Right, man. They're a law unto themselves. They don't have the law, but they do the things contained in the law. You can talk to some Gentiles, and there's some things that they despise. Incest. Um, some some Gentiles, the multiple wives, they, they, not, they don't feel that. They despise that. Um, uh, that's against the law, so I take that one out. That's not against the law. That's against the law of America. But homosexuality, they despise them things. They don't do them things. But yet, on the other side, they eat idolatry. They eat things strangled with blood. And they're big time liars. But yet, they don't commit adultery. They don't own. Um, they refrain from fornication as far as the homosexualities, the, uh, the drugs, you know, they, they, they big on drugs, drug abuse, uh, incest. So when they do them things, do the things that are in the law, but yet not having a the law, they're a law unto themselves. But check this out, read it. Romans 2.15 will show the work of the law written in their hearts. In their hearts. Because they don't have this law, they can't break it down. Come on. Their conscience also bear witness uh -huh. in their thoughts for meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Hey listen, I watch a lot of news and I see these people, how they impartial on certain things. They're blaming somebody for a situation over here, but yet they greet, they're giving somebody a pass on this side. New thing in the news. Right now it is May 30th, May the 30th, 2009, right? This week, a white officer killed a black officer. Let's examine that. Stand up, stand up, stand up. A white officer shot and killed a black officer. Now, they made an excuse for him. They said, well, the cop, the white officer, was driving down the street with other three, um, three co-workers, and all they seen was a black male running down the street with a gun. So the officer got out the car and he fired six shots. Two of them hit the young man, one in the shoulder, one in the chest. Killed him instantly. Now, 
Had there been another white officer running out 125th Street with a gun, what would have taken place? Right. Freeze. Put your hands in the air. None of these things were said. None of these things were said. There was no freeze. Um, put the gun down. Lay down on the ground. There was none of that. It was just a cop got on his car, fired six shots, killed the young man. They didn't get a young man trying to identify himself. None of these things. So they make an excuse for him. But now, on this side, they accuse and they say, the black man, he should have identified himself. He should have been wearing his badge on his neck. He should have been wearing a badge on his belt. They're looking for excuses. The blame, take the blame off the other, off the Gentile. It was an Israelite that got killed by a Gentile. All the while accusing and excusing each other. Right. When you get a white man that do something to another white person, Peterson, the guy that supposed to kill his wife, the ex-cop, they try to put this man under the jail. They try to put this man under jail. They don't have all the facts, they don't have all the evidence, but yet they persecute him, accusing him. Again, according to the scripture, the Gentile, all the while accusing and excusing itself. They don't have the law that so they can't give up straight-laced judgment. In Israel, according to the word of the Most High, the same law for the Jew and the stranger. There is no switching it up, you know, impartial, personal reasons. There's none of that. So the Gentile, all the while accusing and excusing himself, got it twisted. But yet, if they do that which is right, the law for according to the law, they're going to be judged according to that. You know what I'm Psalms 10 and 5. His ways are always previous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He puffed at them. Well, he puffing at North Korea. He's puffing at Iran. He's puffing at China, Russia. He said, I'm the baddest. I'm the biggest. I'm the best. Can't nobody deal with me. Read it. Psalms 10 and 6. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. Isaiah 47 and 7. For I shall never be in adversity. So this is what the wicked believe. This is what the wicked believe. He believe his kingdom is going to be set up and a whole lot of the poor people, poor and needy people, believe him. Because he has reoccurring incidents of he being down and getting back up. He being down and getting back up. But this is the last straw. The Most High is kicking the crutch out of this joke from under this joke. He's not getting back up. The hammer is coming down. But he believes that he'll never be in adversity. Isaiah 47 to 7. Thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. That's what they said. America's going to last forever. Read it. So that thou didst not lay these things to heart. You don't consider these things. You ignore the Bible. You said the Bible was written by man. He got so many, there's so many points in there that's fallible, that, that that's not right. So much hypocrisy in there. You got so many reasons that you don't believe this thing is going to happen. Read it. Neither did us remember the latter end of it. You didn't remember the latter end, man. What happened to Rome? What happened to Egypt? What happened to Babylon? What happened to the Greeks? What happened? The latter end. America needs to remember the latter end of all these kingdoms before them. What, you think you're going to escape unscathed? Nothing's going to happen? The hammer's coming down. Isaiah 47 and 8. Therefore hear now this. Thou that are given to pleasure, uh -huh. as well as careless. Thou that are given to pleasure. Right here in this land, America, who walk right through here, sister. America, given to pleasure. Everybody knows that. That's why when the so-called Al-Qaeda, Taliban, when they supposedly bombed America, the news report was, the big thing was, they were going to wait till America get relaxed again and hit them again. But that's the, that's the info of the 411 that all the other countries have on America. They're given the pleasure. They, they're given the pleasure. They go all around the world searching for pleasure. And they know that America's going to fall asleep again. That's the ideal. America's going to fall asleep again, and here come the next bomb. Here come the next terrorist attack. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Read it. Isaiah 47 and 8. Therefore hear now this, thou that are given to pleasure. Hear this, thou that are given to America, given to pleasure. Hear this, America, that dwellest carelessly. 
You act like there's no problems. You live it comfortably. You got soldiers over there. You got soldiers over there. You're comfortable. Read it. I said they're not hurt. I am. Uh -huh. None else besides you. You say this. I am, and there's no other country like America. We the best. That's what you say. Read it. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the laws of children. Right. You said you're not going to sit a widow. You said you're not going to know the laws of children. That's what you believe in your heart. What happened is, that's arrogant. That's arrogant. What happened is, the poor follow you. The poor follow you and they get caught up in that mindset. And when the hammer comes down, the poor get burnt with you. Read it. Isaiah 47 and 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. Right. In well, one these day. two things are going to come to you. In one moment. In one day. Two things. What are they? The loss of children. The loss of children. The widowhood. And widowhood. How does that happen? Through war. That happens through war. America's gonna lose their children. There's gonna be a whole lot of widows because they keep popping up with these wars. Who's gonna be killed off? The children in the wars. The children in the wars. Why? Why well, I'm saying children? Because these 16, 17, 18 year old children are joining the army and they're getting knocked off. And they don't have the confidence. They don't have the experience. Just last week a report came out that 11 soldiers from the Air Force committed suicide. How is that? Why? Because they don't have the confidence. They don't have the experience of war. So you take these children and you throw them into a foreign country. Right. That's how you're going to know the loss of children. Why is there going to be so many widows? Because as we've seen before when I, with Iraq, all these young men that went to war, what they do? They got married before they went. And a lot of them died over there. Widowhood. So the loss of children, the widowhood, should come upon thee in one day. But these two things shall come upon thee in a moment, in one day. Uh -huh. The loss of children and widowhood. The loss of children and widowhood to America. They puffed up. Read it. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. In their perfection. There's going to be no mistake about what this is. It's going to come in its perfection. Not one or two thousand. In its perfection. Read it. For the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For the multitude of thy sorceries and the great abund abundance of thy enchantments. Your wickedness. Because of your wickedness. Give me that to see your 14. Yeah. Revelation 18 and 4. 14, 14. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, uh -huh. my people, Come on. that ye be not partakers of her sin. That you be not partakers of her sin. Come out of her. Get your head out of of America. I know you say, how are we supposed to do that? We live here. Just stop following their ways. Stop following their ways. Like I said, I mentioned today, this is the easiest one I'm going to hit because it's so frequent. The Lord's Sabbath is every week. Every week the Lord's Sabbath come around. And we, right along with these simple-minded Americans, these Edomites, wreck the Lord's Sabbath. Every week. Every week. So how do we get out of it? Stop crossing the Lord's Sabbath. It's that easy. It ain't hard. You just have to be sincere. That's the problem. There's no sincerity no more. There's no sincerity no more. Everybody say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But when the Lord say, here, do this. When you read it right here, the Lord say, do this. Oh, I can't do that. Can't nobody do that. That's insincerity. That is insincerity. There's been a whole heap of people that did it before us. Proven that it could be done. Proven that it can be done. That's why the scripture's here. That's why the examples are here. But it's for those that are faithful. Those that truly believe. Those are the ones that's going to follow it. Those are the ones that's going to walk in it. Come on out. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, uh -huh. that ye be not partakers of her sins, Come on. and that ye receive not of her plagues. You don't want, listen, nobody going to want any bit to the part of the punishment that's coming down to America. Nobody. Everybody's going to be looking to escape. I make the analogy all the time when people get arrested for some type of um, violation in America and they got some cold spirit with it. With them. They start flipping on each other. They start snitching on each other. It's going to be the same scenario when the hammer comes down. Ain't nobody going to partake of that fight. But you ain't going to have nowhere to go. Why? Because your chance is now. Your chance is right now to get it right. And you rejected it. You refused. You were none of his reproofs. So when the hammer come down, there's no escape for you. And understand, men, women, and children will burn in that fire. 
Revelation 185. For our sins have reached unto heaven, and the most high have remembered her iniquities. Right. The sins of America have reached unto heaven. Hold it. Ezekiel 14. <laughs> Ezekiel 14 and 13. Son of man, with the land sinneth against me by trespassing uh -huh. grievously. Uh -huh. Then will I stretch out my hand upon it. He got he gonna stretch out his hand upon it when that land sinned grievously against the Most High. America is there. America has filled their cup. They sinned grievously against the Most High. Watch. Come on. And will break the staff of bread thereof. Uh huh. And will send famine upon it. And will cut off man and beast from it. It's gonna happen. That's why this brother's reading over here. Come out of it. Come out of it. Read it on. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right, because you're going to want to eat in that day when the Lord cut off the stay of bread. When he brings famine and pestilence in America, you're going to want to be fed and healthy. But you got your reward now, because you chase down the wicked. Your mindset is not set on the most high. The most high is far from your thoughts. The most high is far from your thoughts. You're going to have no parts with the most high because you're too busy chasing the American nightmare. Too busy chasing the American nightmare. That's what it is because it's not a dream no more. How many people have killed themselves chasing this dream? Dream. That's why I call it a nightmare. Because they, 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 they rag themselves, rag themselves trying to get, trying to achieve the riches of America. They destroy themselves, man. How many kids right now are in college popping pills to stay up to the past exams? So they can study the past exams. Lord tell us much studying is a way of some flesh. We need to figure out how to serve the most high. But yeah, we too busy caught up in these colleges how to impress these corporate people. What happened? They just had a um, thing on the news the other day about all the yellies that graduated. I think it was two hundred something, two hundred something. They graduated from Yale. But yet, the job opportunities aren't there. Without considering how much time these young men and women put in studying their four years in college to come out to a society where there's nothing for them. What are they going to be working at? Kmart? Pay less? All that money. You cannot pay back a school loan off a pay, um, pay less pay. I have a school loan. <laughs> Believe me. And mine is cheap. Mine is cheap. I ain't got no, what is it, 30000 a year? Or, or a semester to go to Yale or something like that? I don't have no loan like that. Nothing like that. Mine was only 12000 One year. One year. And I couldn't make the payments working at U-Haul. I had to get another job in my own business. It don't happen. So it's a shame that they, their parents raised them up in that way. They used to throw their life in school to come to society. It has nothing for it. When the most I've been calling them all this time. Seek me out. Seek me out, the most I said. Read it. Revelation 18 and 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And the most I have remembered her iniquity. The most I remembered it, man. The most I remembered it. Ain't nobody getting away with nothing. So the sins of this land have reached to the heavens, man. And if you want to escape the punishment that's coming on you to America, get involved. Get involved. Serve, learn is to serve the Most High acceptably. Not according to this madness that's in the world. Because they got it twisted. Religion got people jacked up. Here goes a perfect example. The Catholic Church says that the priests cannot get married. They must be celibate. First and foremost, that's not in here. First and foremost, that's not in here. So all you Catholic people need to examine that. That's why, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to put on a man. A man that spent 20 years in, in and out of relationships with women. Now to say, I mean, if you make the vow on your own, I'm going to be celibate until the Lord deliver me a woman, that's admirable. Cool. But if you say, oh, I'm going to go join this religion, and one of the requirements is, I can't deal with women, but yet deep down inside, you know you still want to deal with women, you're defrauding yourself. My point is, Catholic priest just got caught on the beach, laying out on the beach in his skimpies. No shirt and everything with a woman. They made a big thing about it. They bring up some next pictures. Catholic beach, the same preacher, um, priest, not preacher, priest, sitting at a restaurant bar, 
tongue in a woman's mouth. They take a picture. They're like, wow, he, you know, he's going to get all the laws or all the customs of the Catholic Church. So what do, what can you do in religion? What do he do? He switched. He switched. Listen, the most I tell men, get a wife, man. He tell men that. The priest, whosoever, get a wife. Why? Save you from fornicating. So you post the mirror. Work. Right. Praise the Lord, huh? First high priest. Where they get it from? The first high priest had a wife and had son. Now how are you going to come all the way down the line from a few thousand years, whatever years you want to count, with this Catholic church madness? Praise the Lord. I mean, you're probably just filling it in. I guess, you know, I, I didn't give you this part, but there's lines of priests that have wives and sons. So where do the Catholic get that from? Oh, from the Pope, huh? The Pope got the king. We didn't understand this guy like that. That came solely from the Catholic Church. Right? We didn't have a woman and children. So where did he get these things from? But like I said, with religion, you can flip and go whatever and do whatever you want. So, if the Catholic, if the priest said, the Catholic don't want me to have a wife, I'm going to switch religion. I mean, what do you say? He tried to, you know, cover the other priests in the church. Saying, by no means do this mean that, you know, it's a bad thing to be celibate. Ah, well, it, when it makes you go out and try and hide to get you a piece of snatch, a piece of little boys, little boys, that's wicked. That's very wicked. So if the Catholic Church is pumping that up, they're wicked. Yeah, I advise everybody to get out of there. Run! But that's what religion hands out. They say you can do this, they say you can't do that. Stick to the word of the Most High. There's no confusion. There's no confusion. Revelation 18 and 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Uh -huh. And double unto her according to her works. All right. Judgment. Judgment is coming back to America. So she's going to be rewarded double what she did to the captain. But well, we're going to be doing it right. We're not going to be doing it like these vulgar, this vulgar nation. And that's what America has become. A vulgar nation. A nation of ill freedom. Even from, even down to us as a people, we follow these people. Listen, again, I can't get enough of you. Reverend Run. Reverend Run. I watched the episode the other Let me check this cat out. Let me check this cat out. See if Reverend Run got any counsel for his household. Reverend Run. The thing was. I, I don't know. His wife wanted to get a permanent tattoo. She was the kids were looking through the pictures of their early days yesteryear. And they go, mommy, you was fly, you was fly. So her emotions started getting involved. She don't feel like she looks so great no more. And she had one picture, she had a, a mole on her face. Like a mole. So her daughter amped her up. We'll get a permanent one. So she brings in the Reverend Trunk. And I'm like, oh yeah, Reverend Trunk. She's pressing him. She's pressing him. He never brings a scripture, man. How you doing? I still love you. He never brings a scripture. I love you, man. I'm my brother's door. Good, good. I know my man did too. I'm the richest man in the world. Alright, I. What's that, eh? God woke me up. Praise the Lord. There you go. Woke me up. Alright, brother. Woke me up. You know what else he said? He said, get back some of that money from the home. Run, right. He didn't um he had no counsel for his woman, so his woman come downstairs and she sit, he sit on the couch, he got the big Bible. Big Bible, you know when the big ones it's like this big. And he's like, I'm sitting here with the Lord, talking with the Lord. I'm like, yeah, Rev, I'm to give it to him, about to give it to him. He didn't bring their scripture. Because the woman is talking about getting a permanent tattoo on permanent um beauty mark. And she's going, let's not call it a tattoo. It's called a, a permanent beauty mark. We got these places that put on, that do these things. Permanently you go to a, um, a beauty salon, it's not a tattoo. It is what it is. The Reverend Run, they have no counsel for his woman. 
He didn't have no counsel for them. Again, religion. You follow these religious leaders, you can't catch the fire. The scripture tells us the leader of these people calls us to earth. And those that let him are destroyed. Those that let him are destroyed. So my, my purpose to bring this lesson out is refrain from the wicked, man. Get away from these cats. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Because the wicked are the first. Let's do that. Revelation 18, verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her according to her works. And in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, uh -huh. so much torment and sorrow give her. Right, because judgment's coming back. America's not going to get away with it. America's going to burn. America's going to burn fire and brimstone. It's right here in the scripture. The same Bible we pick up and go to church with every Sunday. It's just that the preacher, he's so tied up in the money, he's not going to tell you this part. Because if he tell you this part, that America's going to burn, you might be disgusted with him. You might quit your job. You might stop going to work. You might fall into a depressed state. Therefore, there's no more money coming for him. Because he's all about no, no. So he's not going to bring these parts out. America's going to burn. Read it. For she, for she saith in her heart, I said a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Because America believes that. That's what America believes. She said a queen. She's no widow. She's not going to see no sorrow. And the poor people, the fatherless child, they get caught up in it. They get caught up in it. The wicked's going to burn regardless. But then you got the poor innocent that, that's un 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 unexpected. Poor people that don't know which way to go, they get caught up too. But they get caught up with all the American issues. Everything about America they get caught up Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Right, this is my calling. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Read it. By the mercies of the Most High. Come on. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. I present Holy. Acceptable unto the Most High. Holy. Holy. Acceptable to the Most High. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. So you must do that. And first and foremost, you have to step outside the box. Don't get out of the box. Everybody's in the box in the mirror. Everybody thinks the same. Everybody reacts the same. Step outside the box. Look at America for what it is. It's wicked. And it's about to burn. Stay stuck there. Burn with it. Read it. Romans 12 and 2. If you're not conformed to this world, you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you must renew your mind. So step outside the box, man. And look at America for what it is. Because it's not the pretty picture that he painted. Check it out. We got to get out. Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. Uh -huh. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, uh -huh. and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. That's what she believed. For right. her destruction is coming. That's what the most I said, come out of her. Come out of her. So I say, stand outside and look at America for what it is. It's wicked. It's a wicked kingdom. If you caught up in it, we're going to burn you. Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. You that you need to ask me. Read it. Second Ezra 14 and 34. Check it out. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. If you will subdue your own understanding, that's what you must do. You must subdue your own understanding. The problem is everybody's too busy walking to pride, walking in pride. They got their own understanding. They can see it. They don't want to hear this. They want to do things their way. Read it. Second Ezra 14 and 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding uh -huh. to reform your heart, uh -huh. you shall be kept alive. Reform your heart, you shall be kept alive. So again, it's back. Hold that, right? You hold that moment. Everybody understand these things go together. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's all about that. It's all about stepping outside the box and looking at it for what it is. See things for what they are and not what they appear to be. Step outside the zone. Renew your mind. Second Esther 14 to 34. Come on. Therefore, so be 
that you will subdue your own understanding uh -huh. and reform your heart. And reform your heart. The heart is the mind. The heart is not the blood, 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 muscle, blood muscle in the chest that pumps blood throughout the body. That's not the heart the most high is talking about. It's talking about your mind. Why? Because the mind is where your thought and your intent comes from. It's where your thought and your intent come from, so it's reforming the mind, man. Don't get caught, don't stay trapped off in America. America's about to fall. America's about to fall. Anybody got this hype dream about America, how, they, how America's gonna be down? It's not gonna happen. I told you before and I'll tell you again, the stock market is 99% psychology. Psychology. It's all in the cycle. Because now they're trying to put all these so anything, they throw anything at the stock market see what stick. Now they put out a book, Animal Spirit. What is this book about? This book is about the time of prosperity. Why was it so prosperous in America? Because everybody would just take adventure shot. I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this. And they was coming off. That time is over. The time of Animal Spirit is done. Everybody need to be laid back, chill, watch. Don't get caught up in the hype. America's about to go on last, one last run. They got to see how many people they can take with them. Stay faithful, wait patiently for the Heavenly Father. Second Ezra 4 and 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding, uh -huh. you shall reform your heart. Uh -huh. You shall be kept alive. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. Then after death, you shall obtain mercy. So one more time, we're going to bring it back with Solomon 3. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High. Uh -huh. And there shall no torment touch them. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of the Most High. And no torment shall touch them. No torment shall touch them. Read it. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. Uh -huh. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. Who's the unwise? The least suspected. Those that don't know. Those that don't know how the scriptures go. You're not talking about the politics. You're not talking about the religious leaders, because they know how this thing go, but they suppress it. For what? Still to look. We're not looking for money. I want what, for you what I want for me. Salvation. Really? Salvation. Read it. One question. The same verse? Oh, I'm sorry. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 2. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And their departure is taken from misery. Therefore, this is 2nd Ezra 14 and 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding, perform your hurts, you shall be kept alive, and after death you shall obtain mercy. You shall obtain mercy after death. But you gotta fight the fight. You gotta go through it. The scripture said we have not resisted yet until blood. We gotta go through it, man. have to go through it. There's no other way in. You gotta go through this. You gotta believe truly and faithfully in the Heavenly Father. You gotta get your mind out of America and set it up like Christ. With that, what is God in Christ? Shalom. Shalom, this is Brothers United in Christ. Back at you with the time. We're out here on the Sabbath day. Preaching the word of the most time. We try to give the understanding to everybody. So our people first and foremost, which is the nation of Israel. We're going to do a lesson about the book of remembrance, which is this Bible, which is this word. The same book we uphold, the same book that all the religions lift up and claim that they're living by. The, the Holy Bible. Right, we're going to start on this side with um, Baruch 4.1. Baruch 4.1, just to establish the, the authenticity of this word. Right? Baruch 4.1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endured forever. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endured forever. This is a perpetual understanding that we have. Something that's going to endure forever. A continuing vibration. It's not some book that you want to read and just cast the words behind you. This is the book that's going to endure forever. Read on. All they that keep it shall come to life. All those that keep the words of the Bible, the words of the Lord, are going to come to life. Life everlasting. And that's going to be the salvation, you know? But such as leave it shall die. And such as leave it shall die. They're not going to only die in this world, 
but they're gonna die in the world to come, in the kingdom to come, meaning you're not gonna uh, obtain life everlasting. You're gonna, you're gonna receive the second death, which is the death of the soul, the death of your spirit, all right? So if you don't obtain to these words of this book, meaning the, the word, the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, not just the old, but for those of you that just like to hold on to the new, this is about the whole world in its entirety, all right? Read on uh, Malachi 3.16. Malachi 3 and 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often, one to another. So there was constant communication of those that were mindful of the Lord, that still feared the Most High, that pondered upon the words of understanding. And what happened? Come on. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him. And the Most High heard them. And a book of remembrance was written for them, before them. So that we can always come back when we slip, or when we fall, or when we stumble. We always have a reminder. That's what this book is here for. For a book of remembrance. Because the Lord knew we was going to be in a captive state. He knew we was going to forget who we are. And he knew what state that, and conditions our people would be in. That's why he caused this book to be written. Because it's a book to remind you that the Most High is real. And that he's not no idol or no, or no, no, no fantasy or a fable. A lot of people read this book and say it's a book of fables. Or it's some kind of fiction or fictitious story. But they don't realize that this book plays a part in every one of our lives. That's why the Lord says it's a book of remembrance. Read on. The day that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. Come on. And the book of remembrance was written before him. But them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. For those that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. You gotta understand this. There's a lot of people that the brother was bringing on this lesson. There's a lot of people that like to kick the both sides out of their thoughts. They don't even want to think about nothing righteous. All they can think of is living lavishly or living living in lustful situations. They don't want to even think about the Lord, okay? And that's why this book is written, to, to convict you, to bring you back into remembrance and to make you feel contrite or guilty for the things that you've been doing in your life. Because a lot of us have been living very wicked, very insincere, and very, you know, corrupt, corrupting your own selves, right? Give me that Deuteronomy 30 and take that from 11. 19, sorry. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day. Come on. This is Moses. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites, to the nation of Israel, to the lost 12 tribes of Israel, who today are known uh, as the Negroes those of Latin descent and those of so-called Native American Indian descent. He's speaking to the house of Israel. Read on, brother. I call to heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and a curse. Blessing and a curse, life and death. That's what this book, this book is the book of life. This book is to understand how you should conduct yourself or, or, or live according to these instructions. That's what this book is here for. Because if you do not continue in it, then there's death waiting at your door, people. Understand that. This is the issues of life and death that we are reading about. And that's what we establish in this world. We're not coming out of no Quran. We're not coming out of no New World Translation of the Bible. We're not dealing with no, no Book of Mormon or no, or no Kiva and the Goss or, or what they got, uh, the Book of Enoch or no Book of Joshua. The Lord is dealing with the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and that's it. We on, brother. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That both thou and thy seed, thy seed meaning thy posterity or the offspring, because believe you me, everybody's living and dying every day, having children and families every day, but they don't have the proper instructions to give them. All they want to do is live how they feel is correct, or what they feel it, it, it works for them in their life. But nobody want to, want to live according to the words of this Bible, which is a problem to them, people, because this is the issues of life and death. And nobody wants to die, nobody wants to burn, and nobody wants to be in wickedness. 
But everybody wants to claim like they're righteous though. But these are the these are the instructions. These are are, are is the curriculum that we should be following. Right? Skip the education of the so-called white man. Because that, that's what everybody believes in today. They believe, oh, we got to go to e get educated, go to the colleges so we can become somebody in the world. But it's not about the world, people. It's not about the world. This is about the world. Not the world. The word of the Most High. Read it. Deuteronomy 30 and 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. That thou mayest love the Most High, which is the greatest commandment. If you don't love the Father, if you don't love the Most High, then where are you? What do you love? You love the world. You love the things that are in the world. We got to come up out of that, people. We got to come to this true, sincere charity, which is the love of the Most High. We don't, brother. That thou mayest love the Lord thy power, come on. and that thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest obey. Obedience. Obey. The root word of obedience. To obey. To listen. To hearken. To do the things that are in this world. Peace, brother. That's what this is all about. That's why we stand out here every Saturday, every Sabbath day, and try to preach this word out to our brothers and sisters. So they can get the understanding, so they can save their lives when the destruction comes down on America. Because believe you me, America is going to be destroyed according to this word, according to the scriptures. America ain't got much longer. We're about to kick, kick the kick it about of it. Sweep the world from right from the bottom of it. Understand that, people. You know? That thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy light in the length of thy day. Stop, for he, the most high is our life. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. For the most high is our life. All right, this is what we stand for. This is what we wake up for. Every day we wake up, we pray to the most high, just for giving us life. Just for giving us the understanding that we are in existence and it's Him that gave us this existence. It's the Most High to give us this breath of life, to get up, to move, to work, to, to obtain um, work, to, to, to take care of our families. You understand? It's the Most High that is our life. Hold that verse right there. Read it. 1 Corinthians 6, 16, 6, 19. First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know that the body is the temple? We don't worry about going to no big temples and no big churches because we understand that our bodies are our temples. We understand that when two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of it. So we're in church right now, right here on church in, in chapel, downtown. We're in church right here. On, we're in church on Church Street. Praise the Lord for that. Read it. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, Come on. which is in you, which you have of the Most High? It's the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of wisdom, which the Most High gives us, that we can even come out and preach the way we do. It's the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is not no man or, 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 or some, some man that came and went. A lot of people like to affiliate the Holy Spirit okay. with uh, Tazadaki, the so-called uh, comforter. Which is which is totally blasphemous. It's totally heretic to even believe something like that. A lot of people want to uh, accommodate the Holy Spirit as being Elijah Muhammad, which is the next lie. We're gonna shoot down and poke holes in all these lies because we want to uplift this truth, which is this word. Read on, brother. First Corinthians six and twenty. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit which are the most high in the body and in your spirit which belong okay. to the most walk, high everybody running around talking about this is, I could do whatever I want I'm 18 I'm grown I could do whatever I want no that yeah you, you do have the choice to choose whatever you want but what are you going to choose life or death what are you going to choose the Lord didn't give you over didn't give you this life so you could just drag his ways Understand that. The Lord did not give us life so we could just go off and do what the hell we want. Understand that. Read on Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 30 and 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy power, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. Come on. For, his, for he is thy life. He is thy life. Read in it. the length of thy days. In the length of our days. That thou mayest... The length of our days meaning that we can obtain a longer life in Christ, in the Most High, and in the keeping of His laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what this is all about. There's a lot of congregations out there preaching 
you know, the destruction of America, the white man's the devil. We're not up here doing that. That is not our full ministry. We come up with the whole entirety of the gospel, which is first and foremost, life everlasting, salvation in Christ. That's what we are doing. We're not worried about how the wicked gonna get destroyed or when. We're looking about how the righteous can obtain salvation. Understand that, we don't. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear to thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. To give them. And that is the covenant and the oath that the Lord established with our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give us a land. Right now we don't have a land. Right now, we don't have a heritage. We don't have a government. We don't have an army. We're here in a captive state in America. This is not our home land. Understand that, people. We were brought over here in car cargo slave ships against our own free will. And we don't put this on the so-called white man. We put this on our own selves for the, for the iniquities that our forefathers did. So now you got a group of people in our land today claiming to be us, claiming to have our identity. Matter of fact, they don't even claim. They, they took our identity, they stole our land. And now we're in a captive state. And that's, that's the vibration we're bringing out. The Lord is going to give us a of things in our land, which is in the land of Canaan, so called modern day Palestine. The same man that you Israelis and Palestinians are fighting over. Right? Look at James 4.1. James 4.1. But what's come forth and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that stop, war in your members? Stop. The Lord said, for whence come wars and fightings among you? Primarily, the Lord is speaking to the nation of Israel right here. But the fact that the Lord is talking about war, it can, it can trickle down to all mankind. Understand this. Read that James 1 and 1. James 1 and 1. James, servant of the Most High. Now James was a disciple of Christ. You need to understand that. He's a servant of the Most High, just like his servants of the Most High. We are ministers of the Most High. Alright, read on. And of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Christ. And of his son, Christ, Yahweh Shai, who we know as the Messiah. Read on, brother. To the twelve tribes, to the, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. To the twelve tribes which are scattered through the four corners of the face of the earth, in North, Central, South America, and throughout all the different regions that were scattered. The Lord is, this book is written for us. Understand that. Read on. Read it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Count it all joy when you fall into all these different pearls and stripes and troubles. Temptation. We don't understand that. The reason why I brought this verse out was to show you that this book, or this, this scripture here, is pertaining to the nation of Israel. Alright? So as I'm bringing out in the fourth chapter of it, 4 1. James, or what? For what come forth of fighting among you? Come on, are they not from hence? Even of your lust that war in your members? Even of your lust, this is the act, this is the reason why we have wars today. Because we got groups of men that lust after different different things. Like they might be lusting after oil, they might be lusting after land, they might be wanting to amalgamate other lands amongst their empire. America's an empire, just like the Roman a Greco Empire. This is an extension of the Roman Greco Empire. Just like the Babylonian Empire. Just like the Persian Medes Empire. America is an empire. Now they want to call what they want to bring up some North American Union. Alright? The point I'm making is that the reason for war is through the lust. That war in your mind. Come on. The, yeah. lust, of, the lust of the money and riches. Alright? We know. James 4 and 2. You lust and you have not. You lust and you have not. As I mentioned before, we got group, we got a nation over in Israel right now claiming to be Israelites. They call themselves Israelis or Jewish. And, and, and they're fighting over a land that's not theirs. Read on, brother. You lust and you have not. Come on. You kill and desire to have. You cannot obtain. You cannot obtain. They over there suicide bombing, bombing themselves out. You know what I'm saying? Going to each other's mosques, going to each other's churches, just just shooting everybody out for the sake of religion. Alright? For the sake of religion, which is not the word of the most high. 
We don't, bro. You fight in war, and yet you have not. You fight in your war, and you have not. Read it. Because you ask not. Because you ask not. He's, they're not coming to the Lord in sincerity. They're not truly humble enough, like like uh like the Syrians did in Nineveh. Understand that these people are contra. I mean, are are are, are straight contrary to the word, and they claim to be the people of the Lord. We don't. James four and three. You ask and you receive not. Read it. Because you ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. This is not your zone. You're not, you're not in place with the Lord. You're not doing the things that He requires of you. So that's why you ask the best. There's a lot of people committing all types of wickedness, but they want blessings from the Lord. And they walk around, you ask them, how you doing? Well, I'm blessed. How do you know you're blessed? You don't even know. Understand that. You got a lot of people claiming that they're righteous from their own mouths. But they ask in the midst. They're far off. Far gone from this world. That's all. That's all. James 4 and 3, you ask and you receive not, because you ask amiss. Because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your lust. That they may consume it upon their lust. That's how they do with this word also. They consume it upon their lust. Alright, understand. James 4 and 4, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not the friendship of the Most High? Know you not the friendship of the world? It's enmity with the Most High. So the Lord's talking to all the adulterers and adulteresses. People that want to be out just living, you know, in fornication or in spiritual fornication. Alright? The Lord tell you that the friendship of the world is at enmity with the Most High. Meaning it's a beat. It's a strike. It's a contention. You're not, you're not going to be claiming the Most High and claiming the world or religion. You understand this? Read that verse again. James 4 and 4, the adulterers and adulterous sins. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? It makes you an enemy to the Most High. When you love the world so much, you can't get your head out of the madness that's going on. Or you're so wild up in your life that you can't even think straight upon the commandments of the Most High. Or that you just shoot it behind your back. That makes you an enemy to the Most High. The fact that you love this world so much. Or that the fact that you love America so much. I'm talking about some God bless America. They got a new slogan, God damn America now. You got a lot of people pumping that up because they know that this place is headed for damnation, for destruction, for ruin. Alright, read on. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of the Most High. They're an enemy to the Most High. And what's the friend of the world when you're into Baptist or Pentecostal or Methodist? Or, 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 you know, Lutheran, or being a Muslim, Episcopalian, all these different religions, people of all these different, con or, or people, or congregants, and, and they prosper, truly. They do prosper. They have big time churches, big time, big time cathedrals that they fill up. But are these people sincere? Are these people truly living according to the word of the Most High? I think not. I think not. And we're here to expose them and to uplift them and try to get them up, pull them up out of there. That the walls fall over every, all of their eyes. All over there. Read that on Isaiah 25 and 7. Right? That's it. Isaiah 25 and 7. Is anybody rolling with Satan's ways of the Most High? You know, Satan come up and pushed himself into religion. Now he's claiming, you know, to be the minister of the Lord. Like the brother mentioned of the Catholic priests. Catholicism. They claim to be the priests of the earth now. The prominent priests, which is the Pope. That's who they claim to be the priests of them. But what they don't realize is we are the priests. We are the preachers of this world. The Lord gave this to us for an inheritance. Right? Hold that. Hold that. Get Romans 10. Isaiah 25 and 7. He was surely destroyed in this mountain. Excuse me. And he was he will destroy and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. So the face that is of the covering that's cast over all people is religion to them. Okay? Because a lot of people swear up and down that they're serving the Lord. But they don't even realize that they're serving devils. They're serving idols. In every religion. There's idolatry. And we can go through all the different religions and different idolatries. But right now I'm not going to do that. But in every religion there's some type of symbol or idol that they have that they claim makes them closer to the Lord. 
I'll give you one primary example. These crosses and these rosemary beads. You know what I'm saying? These people running around, praying, holding them. You know, they, 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 you got people tattooing rosemary beads on them, claiming that they're into some righteousness. Understand that, that that's not the soul, people. If you're dealing with religion and it's an idol, if there's a Mother Mary statue or all the saints you're praying to, you might want to leave that, that religion. Because what's the second commandment of the Lord? The second commandment of the Lord is, Thou shalt not make any graven images, nor bow down before it. But every religion has that. And that's the face covering that's cast over all people. Not just the nation of Israel. All people. Whether it's, whether it's Harry Harry Krishna to these uh, Hindus, or Buddha to the Chinaman, right? Or, or Shaka Shaka Lin to the Africans. You gotta understand, all their shrines and all their relics is formed with idolatry. Come on, bro. Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. The veil that is spread over all nations. The fact that they don't even know who they are. You got a lot of nations that they don't even know who they are as a people, let alone the nation of Israel. You got a lot of people that don't even know the truth of the Most High. They don't even read their Bibles. They just listen to what their pastors and their ministers say. They don't take, they take what they say for later, but nobody takes the time to read this Bible and to try to understand it. Read on. Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death and victory. The Lord power will wipe away tears from all faces. Come on. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth. And the rebuke Lord of his people. Meaning all the things that he put upon us. He's going to, read that verse again. He will swallow up death and victory. Who's going to swallow up death and victory? Christ. The one we're going to get the issues of life from. Christ is going to swallow up death and victory. We don't. And the Lord power will wipe away the tears for all faith. Because right now we're in a sorrowful situation. So we need that uplifting from the Lord. And how are we going to get that through this world? We don't. And I view you, and I read in the review of his people, so he takes away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. For the Lord has spoken. The most I spoken. And where did he speak at? Throughout the, all throughout this country. All throughout this world. And that's what we hear. Alright, give me that. Give me that. Second Peter, one, first chapter. Second Peter, one and two. Second Peter, one and two. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the Most High and through Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Stop. So the Lord said, "Grace," meaning He's gonna give us the gift to come into this knowledge of truth and peace, which is far from all the, all the strife and contention that you guys have.